Hi everybody, this is After Diver number one. Well, exactly two weeks ago today, Hurricane Irma came through and well ventilated this area for us. Um, I just wanted to do a review of the generator that we use, the Duramax 4850. Uh, there's been a lot of videos on this generator, but they're mostly unboxing and new. Uh, this one has uh, 70 hours on it now, 60 from Hurricane Irma, and uh, I just wanted to go through some of the things that I would have done differently, uh, some any problems that I had with it, if any, and uh, just how well it's held up. Um, overall, it's been a lifesaver for the price I paid for it, $299.99, as you can see. Um, it's paid for itself easily. Uh, all right, so we're going to get into it here in a minute. All right, I moved the camera over to the shade here. Hopefully that'll help. Uh, it's only at 10 in the morning here, and it's already pushing 90 degrees. <laughs> and you can see I still have my uh, some of my hurricane panels up there. So I think I'm going to leave those up there for several more weeks just in case. So first off, with the price of the generator, um, or why we have the generator, uh, last September 2016 my wife and I were out of the country and apparently we had a tropical storm while we were gone and uh, the power was on when we came home but it had been out for four days while we were gone and everything in the refrigerator was uh, destroyed so my wife's like we really need to look into a generator so I got online um, and in December I'm a big fan of eBay I saw this generator for sale for $299.99, uh, no tax, free shipping. It was act actually shipped uh, 20 feet, delivered 20 feet from where it is right now. Um, so I'm a big fan of eBay. I have noticed though that you can't find them for under $500 right now. Usually they're going for about $599. So, but if you're looking into buying a generator, I would wait till this spring. We happen to live in a uh, remote area of north central Florida, so it's a good idea to have a generator. We lose power all the time. Uh, I have 10 hours of use on it just from storms, uh, small local storms. So, what would I have done differently? Well, first off, I would have probably downloaded and read the owner's manual. I did use the quick setup guide, and that's as far as I went with it. Uh, in a past life, I was a uh, factory certified technician, uh, Dodge, Ford, Asusu, Mitsubishi, but apparently I don't know that much about small generators. Uh, as you can see, the owner's manual tells me to put in a 1030 weight or a straight 30 weight in my condition, but I end up putting in a Mobile One 530, which is just a little too thin for the warm temperatures that the generator runs. And also the little tidbit that you should change your oil every 20 hours. Uh, oops, I will be changing the oil for the first time at 70 hours. Okay, so how well it's held up? Well, not changing the oil when I was supposed to was standing. The um, dipstick is it's getting a little dirty and it's not to the very tippy top like it was before. Um, so it's down I would say it holds 20 ounces recommended I would say it's maybe down two ounces so no big deal there. Um, as far as fuel leaks or oil leaks I have not had any problems with that. Uh, when it was running, we did a little watch. We would come out every hour to make sure nothing was leaking from it. And uh, just check the fuel levels and things like that. As you probably already know, the generator runs on both gasoline and on propane. Uh, I've only run it on the propane line for about an hour just to make sure it works and there was no leaks. On the gasoline department, uh, for the majority, except for this tank here, it's been run on 90 octane marine fuel, ethanol free. Really seems to like that. Uh, another thing I did notice is the owner's manual states that um, 
for the four gallons of fuel at a 50% load, expect about eight hours of running time. Well, I must have been running a lot less than a 50% load. I was running a refrigerator full size, the biggest thing you can buy at Home Depot. I think it's like 34 cubic feet. And uh, a small air conditioner, the Wi-Fi, of course, and a couple of lights. And I ran them off of two different lines. I didn't put them all in one line, so I put an extension cord here and an extension cord here, made sure the breaker was off, fired up the generator, made sure the appliances were off, except for the refrigerator, which I can't. And then uh, once the generator was on, warmed up for a minute, I flipped the breaker on and away we went. Uh, but I did notice that four gallons of fuel, which by the way, you need to add very slowly to this. Uh, no matter what funnel I used, it, it tend to flow over real easily. So you gotta add it really slowly. But the four gallons of fuel was lasting 11, 12 hours easily. Uh, we did not run the generator at night. What I would do is, uh, we lost power for almost four days total. What I would do is uh, run it until 10, 11 at night when we went to bed, made sure the refrigerator was closed, cranked up the AC in our bedroom, and then uh, at 6.30 in the morning, I would get up, fire the generator up right away, and let it run you know, until four or five that afternoon shut it off, let it cool off, refill it, and uh, repeat as necessary. But it, it, it seems to be pretty efficient. So, overall, I've had no problems with the generator. I've had several people over here, you know, asking me what I paid for it, and I told them, they're like, wow, that's a lot of machinery for 300 bucks. And they're right, but it seems to have held up well. So, I'm going to do an oil change on this later on. It's a little too hot. Right guys, way too hot right now. But uh, I'm just gonna start it up for you. And because of the fuel in it, um, I'm gonna let it run dry to turn it off. So here we go. Need to. I'm gonna try that again because I just dropped the camera. I bought a new camera and the little thing is tiny and slippery. All right, so you just need to turn the choke on. Actually, I'm gonna leave it off because it's so warm. And then uh, just turn the key. Took it like two minutes to run that fuel out of the float bowl, but that way we don't get any of that nasty gas. Um, I'm gonna leave the gas in here for about another month in case we have a storm. And uh, if we don't, I'm gonna go ahead and drain that gas because I don't want to leave that ethanol gas in there. So uh, overall, guys, it's been a good buy. Um, if you're considering buying one of these, uh, if you can find it, like I said, wait till wait until the spring. You can probably get a heck of a lot better price on it but I don't think it'll disappoint you. All right, folks, take care.